Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the show for this week. Uh, tonight, I have a special guest. I have Chris Fisk in the house. Hey, hey. hey thanks for having me, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on last minute. I mean, I, I, I got a hold of you in, what, 20 minutes ago or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, can you come on? Uh, for, you know, I don't know what's going on with Murph. Um, you know, he's been mm. still fighting sickness. And so I just trying to give him as much grace as I can give him through all this. Cause I know, man, it's, it's tough as hell. So, oh, yeah. uh, but we still have a topic to cover. We're going to get to that in a little bit about creating characters, something that I don't think, uh, we see very much of in, uh, YouTube and the, in the channels and stuff and discussed in our communities. And so I wanted to do that a little bit and then, um, uh, we'll say hello to the chat. So let's go to the top and see who we got. We got Crazy Mad in the house. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We also have Mo Biggs. Howdy. Hey. hey, Mo, I just got one thing to say to you, man. I just have one thing and you, you need to listen up, okay? Oh, can you guys hear that? It's only for Mo. <laughs> hey, just for Mo. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what you say. <laughs> can't wait to hear what you have to say about that. I have the song for you. I can play it in the background. StreamYard now lets you add your own music. Nice. And, uh, Mo likes to. Um, <laughs> that's my band playing, and he always likes to throw that song out there. He always tells me, or Murph, not to be brutal. And, <laughs> So I just had that for you, Mo. Nice. Um, so we'll get back to that in a minute. I'm going to highlight it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Mo says, uh, <laughs> <Uppity> Chris Fisk. <laughs> so we have the problem and the solution all on one stream. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to be brutal. That's cool, man. That's cool. You can be your crazy self, but you know what? I just had to play it for you. I thought I'm going <laughs> to upload that and put that up here. It has to happen. So what else can we do? Have to have some fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I feel like my show has been a little weird. It's been weird without Murph. I've been trying to just kind of grasp at straws and figure out where to go. But I'm going to get back down to the uh, brass knuckles of what we're doing, which is uh, making comics and hmm. getting down to the nitty gritty, you know, um, and getting into how do we do it? Why do we do it? have discussions with people of, of, about how they do it, stuff like that. And I think that's most interesting to everybody. So I don't know. I did some music stuff and that seemed to interest people in the chat. We had some spillover from, uh, I think the last one, everybody was still talking about it, like over in um, global frequency. <laughs> they didn't even oh, know nice. what hit them. They were like, why are we discussing ACDC? And this guy's <laughs> talking about this right here. So we had some fun messing with that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get to Crazy Mad's question of the week. Question of the week. Would you rather do a polar bear club jump or get into a hot tub that is way too hot? Is the hot tub hot? How, how hot? <laughs> like we talk yeah. boiling? Like, <laughs> And that's what Mo says. He says for the question of the week, it depends on your definition of too hot. If we're talking third degree burns, I'll take the jump. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. So if you're just talking about it's like it's hot and it's uncomfortable, but it's not like giving you skin burns, then <laughs> I don't mind getting it getting in at all. But I don't know. It depends. It depends on if I'm able to get out of the cold after I do the jump in the cold water. So I don't want to catch any frostbite. Ooh, have you ever you ever been uh, you ever had like major hyperthermia? No. Like I have not. Dude, it is a like I almost died from it. It's a very, Ooh. yeah. Like I, I, I know what it's like to to freeze to death. It's 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 not as bad as you think, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound reassuring at all. I don't no, think I want to try that. <laughs> well, like your muscles, your muscles are they they start contracting in, uncontrollably, but like okay. you don't feel cold. Like there's a point where like you stop. Yeah. going convulsive and you're just like wow i'm actually kind of hot like i'm warm oh yeah <laughs> and then it's bad then it's bad oh yeah <laughs> the art and times of j ryan thanks for stopping by man 
He says, how wrong can Dirk possibly be? Three strike rule in effect. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go on easy. They don't go easy on us around here. I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> they really don't. Um, so no prisoners around here for these guys. <laughs> so he said, I just hope Chris doesn't freeze to death during the nuclear. <laughs> oh, you're going down by low. <laughs> Oh, Don't shit. even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Well, that's fun. So um, tonight we're going to have some discussion, I hope, about something interesting. <laughs> I tried to make it interesting, but we'll see. Um, so we're talking about the anatomy of a character and what makes just a good character design. Not really like what makes a great character necessarily because you can get into all, all kinds of philosophies, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of talk about how you design your characters. I design my characters, the influences that go into it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just build out of that. And we'll just go from there. Cool. So to start, how did you start designing your characters for Infinitale? Well, in a way I kind of cheated because um, I, had players design their characters. Um, Ooh. Yeah, because uh, the Infinitale Chronicles comic is actually based on the Chronicle tabletop sessions of the RPG. And uh, when these characters were built, um, you know, I, I was creating my own tabletop role-playing game system that was uh, based off of uh, storytelling rather than just uh, murder hobo. You know, it was like infinite tale. You know, the whole idea was that you're, you're telling this like group story. And part of that was having that collaboratory uh, experience with uh, with these players. It's like, well, what kind of character do you want to play? You know, like, like define it, like, you know, name, name a, a character that, that you would, you know, see yourself playing the role as not, not what they do. Just, you know, are you like the Han Solo? Are you like the, uh, the Captain Picard, you know, like, like, are you the wise Yoda? Like, g give me, give me something that, uh, that you would actually want to like, like an archetype that you'd want to uh, play as a character. And, you know, we, we started getting a lot of, uh, like, obscure references, it, it was like video game references. Like, I want to play Link. Well, Link doesn't have a personality. Like, Link is a right. blank right. character. Like, aesthetically, you could play him, but, like, that's cosmetics. That has nothing to do yeah. with what's the role. And it's like, right. well, I like the, the, the farm boy, the hero's journey of the, the rags to riches, kind of, you know, the, the weak going to, you know, and then it was funny because as we started discussing what we wanted for the story, it turned into something instead of rags to riches, it was riches to rags. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. Well, let's, yeah, let's put a let's put a spin on it. So the the character designs were these like very uh, ostentatiously living, spoiled, eternally young, pretty people, and uh, <laughs> you know we got references okay. from things like uh, Elric of Melnimide, um, yeah. and, you know even Raceland Magier from. Uh, uh, Dragonlance, you know, very, very, you know, he's, he's not going to be the guy that gets in physical confrontations. Right. And, uh, you know, from there it was, okay, well, now that we have kind of like, like the, what we want for the characters, what does the bigger story look like? And that was when we started looking at the, the bigger world. And there were things like, well, you know, this guy's playing the, like the story takes place with these elves. And it was like, okay, well, let's look at the notes that we've compiled for the elf, like the, the fictional notes for the elves, like what world building elements exist. And they have things like, you know, these are spoiled, pampered people who've never really had like any real toil in their life. So they're basically like Logan's run, you know, young 20 something. <laughs> okay. And then on top of that, like they're barefoot, like all of them have like their heels and their their toes exposed. And it's like, well, that's not very efficient for like a military. Like you look at their military regalia and it's like, they got freaking feet. I just take a sword and just go chomp, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you learn that it's because of the way that they live and they, they have this idea where they always want to have their feet in soil. So things like you know, residing in stone or, uh, you know, being out in the desert where there's no life, it's, it's extremely like, uh, uncomfortable for them. So they they've lived a life of comfort. They've had, you know, kind of those little story elements kind of throughout their entire aesthetic. So when these character designs were built, they were built off of, you know, how pretty they were, or how, you know, luxurious they were, how well they were at displaying their wealth. And then on top of that, yeah, sure. They could throw down, but they're not going to be on equal footing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Tank. Hey. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? Um, it's 
that's a great idea. And so basically people were doing like avatars. So they started out with an avatar idea and then you guys built out of that. Yep. Yep. Okay. And Cause I think it's kind of interesting because a lot of people do, you draw up something and then mm -hmm. you end up putting a story to what you see. Yep. You know? Yeah. There, there's um, always, there's no one way to do it. And I've seen people yeah. build the aesthetic first and then build the story around it. And then there's right. others where they've got, you know, story notes and they start putting that into the art. So both ways work, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, that's kind of what I did. And that's what I was showing you a little bit. I, I drew a oh, character yeah. and um, you know, this is not what Murph and I did for Ballad of the Celestials. Um, Murph had an idea in his head. Mm -hmm. He said, this guy is this way. This is what he does in the story. And this is, these are the things he'll do. And then I was like, okay, so let's make him this badass. You know what I mean? So you got to do this and you, you got to throw badass out there. Right. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, so I want him to have this cool armor that you don't normally see. It's, it's original. It's something different. And, um, or at least not as common. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's when I came up with mayor's armor, which I think is one of my favorite designs that I've ever done. And, um, but we we worked in a design element to that armor, and that ended mm -hmm. up being kind of like a family crest, and then it ended up being the symbol on the cover of you know the logo, or mm -hmm. on, beside the logo, and um, it's a visual point now, or, you know, focal point to the story and stuff, and it's really fun. Um, that kind of stuff it was easy for me to do, but I mm -hmm. will tell you sometimes it's hard to match up what a writer wants out of a character. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and so when Murph had ideas like that, he would throw stuff out and go, oh, you know, Chiru was very hard for me. He was like, he's just this kid who's very fun loving and he's like a cook and he cooks for the group. And he's the, you know, he he's not a warrior. He just runs really fast. And he's like, and I was like, well, how the hell am I supposed to draw this like? weakling you know like weak kid <laughs> i guess that's what i can visualize and I, I it was hard to really grasp onto anything visually with that you know so i had a hard time designing out of it crazy man says murph okay i'm worried about him yeah oh, man he um he's just still been sick and I've, I've been giving him a lot of grace to just kind of be on the show or not right now because he's fighting this for a while so we'll see um and i hope he's able to come on he said he was going to try to come on tonight and he didn't get to so mm. just the way it is smash the like button hit the bell and receive all notifications <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that tank um yeah so okay so you had an avatar now did you give everybody ideas for your avatars or they just came in with the avatars and then you designed a story with it well, uh, like like one of the characters, for example, um, Ashlyn, one of the main characters in the story, the player approached me and she's like, well, um, using the game mechanics, you know, she, she picked like the highborn uh, attribute uh, or uh, trait, which was uh, one of the options you can, you, you basically have like these, uh, a pool of, of uh, basically a pool to draw from these points okay. that you can uh, allocate into virtues or flaws or you know, merits or, or detriments or whatever. And uh, one of the, the virtues was uh, uh, highborn. So she's like, I want to be like a princess. I was like, okay. Okay. You know, so, so she picked being a princess and then it was like, well, I want to be an elf too. So she looked at the elf stats, picked the princess. And then uh, she's like, well, you know, what can we do story-wise for this? Like, okay, I, I have this elf princess, but you know, I mean, this is like, you know, before uh, hell, before Record of Lodos came out. So it's like, she didn't have Deedlet in mind or something like that. So it was like, okay, well, what it, what, well, what kind of designs do you want? You know, like, like we we have some of the the kind of the lore for what the elves how they live and whatever. Is there anything uh, particular that you want to draw from that, or do you want to go you know completely off grid and be like, I'm not a normal elf. I'm I'm like the Drizzt Warden there. I'm not the the evil dark elf. I'm my own kind of character <laughs> that's you know running against the grain. And she's like, no, no, I, I actually like the pampered kind of stuff like i think that's kind of cool but but it's like well what could we do from a story perspective like why would this be of importance and then she's like well you know well, we, we could do uh you know like like her origin like 
she's got like family that issues that she's running into. I said, okay, well, how, do, how does that translate into like your aesthetic? And she's like, well, maybe she doesn't like her clothing or her costumes or whatever don't fit her right because she's not supposed to be the person wearing them. You know, so so that became a yeah. story element as well. And it was like, oh, oh, okay, really so cool. she's, and it turns out that she actually ascended uh, her position because an older sibling died. And it was the the story then started becoming the, the you remember Stand By Me? Should have yeah. been you, Gordy. Should have been you, Gordy. <laughs> you know? And so, so she added that in and I was like, holy uh, crap, that's kind of cool. So we, we yeah. started building from that. And it was kind of like a puzzle piece. It was like she created the puzzle right. piece with the little hook. And then I'm looking at all these other story elements for the world. And I'm like, okay, chink, it now fits. She's this character okay. wearing this ill-fitting stuff, trying to put on this face. So she's got all these like lavish gowns that are like kind of too big for her. You know, like her boobs are not as big as the, <laughs> like all this stuff. Like, and again, this is like a teenager going through this stuff. So she's she's telling me all this stuff, and then started getting into other things. Like, well, well, what about like the the noble house that she's come from? That she comes from. Like, what what could we develop from that? Because a character isn't just a character. A character is an imprint on the right. world around it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. it's like you know, it's what is it? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. You know, when you take Jimmy yeah. Stewart out of the picture, like things change. So. Yeah. Definitely. We started looking at how that character impacted the world, and it was like, oh, let's let's give her uh, like her favorite color was red, and I was like, well, you know, you want to make that like your house color or whatever. So she's like, yeah, I'm gonna be a, a red elf, and this is long before like blood elves and D and D or uh, Warcraft or any of that stuff. So I'm like, okay, that, that's weird. I'm usually used to like green elves. What's this red shit? And she's like, yeah. oh, well, we could we could actually make that a significant thing, and I don't want to spoil it, but there's an actual significance <laughs> to that color. And it turns oh, out there's cool. a there's a berry in the there, there's like a the in that that uh, sovereignty or that land or whatever there's this special berry that that they use to stain their clothes and there's an actual oh. significance to it. It actually messes with them. So oh, it's like okay. it's like oh okay so <laughs> so we start you know it starts very micro and then by the end of our character discussion we had this huge like again I had was it uh, uh, folders of women. You know, I had the re <laughs> re reams of notes about this one character, and it was like, okay, you you know, here's here's your like here's your playground. Now play in it. Start building whatever you can from that. And I got a few sketches back from her, and at the time, before I lost hand, my my hands, right. uh, she she was able to like, I was basically like a police sketch artist. So I like drew it out. And she's like, yeah, that's my character. That's awesome. Right. So <laughs> I think that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the hard thing was um, Murph he's very particular, you know, and he was kind of, he didn't like my first designs of mayor. That's for sure. And then some of the other oh. characters, he didn't have tons of input on, but he, you know, he was really particular about uh, Zune, the female. And he definitely told me when I got it wrong, <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> which was okay, which I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's what this is about. It's if you're collaborating, you have to let them tell you, no, that's not what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, or yeah, that nailed it, you know, or, or yeah, that's pretty close or, cause some things are very hard to grasp, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you're going with descriptors and that's why I'm saying sometimes it's, it's just, it's just easier to draw it out and then go, what can we do with that? You know? And, um, that's kind of what I'm, I've been doing is just like creating something new. I like to see new things sometimes, and it's not necessarily something that's going to go into, um, ballad of the celestials. It may be something else. Mm -hmm. And the start of a different story, but, um, you know, something that, uh, maybe we'll add in down the road or maybe we won't, who knows? We're just playing around with it. And, uh, but I came up with this, I'm going to show everybody this. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is what I did. This is the character and I'm, I am happy with it. I think the drawing is good. Oh, what I do. Controls a little bit wonky <laughs> and uh, I meant to hit the zoom. Oh, that's probably too big, but let's zoom up. Let's scroll up here. You know, you get the face and everything now. And, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for me, what, you know, what informed the design and what came into creating a character. And I really didn't have a writer going, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this. I just started drawing and I thought, you know, what would be cool? Um, trying to play the cool factor and, and badass factor and all that. And I was totally. like, okay, so visually you have to have something that's going to catch the eye. And I am heavily influenced by He-Man, you know, 
that's one of the thing that one of the things that plays over and over in my mind from a kid um, is the like designs of GI Joe, designs of mm-hmm. He Man. Um, you know, I think the '80s cartoons like Mask, those things oh, had yeah. a big mark on me. You know what I mean? Just because they were some of the coolest designs I've ever seen. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think that's why I, did, I latched onto Star Wars so much too, is because the design of, of those characters were just. At, at my young age, I was like, holy shit, what is that? You know, yeah. <laughs> and it was amazing. So, and, you know, not to get on a Star Wars rant, crazy mad, but I'm just <laughs> letting you know, that's what drew me in. It's, a, it's cold as fuck in the wintertime in that outfit. Yeah, <laughs> it is. He's got a little hood. Look, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't believe Dirk didn't read my statement of support out loud. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Also, be sure to uh, to subscribe to this channel. Dirk needs all the help he can get as a single father of a YouTube channel. (laughs) Now that Murph has become a deadbeat dad. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to garnish your wages. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. I love it. Murph will like that. He'll laugh. Did any of the dudes in this shows wear a skirt? Very progressive, Dirk. I know. I mean, that's, it's true. I, I put a, I put a uh, skirt on the guy. I'll show you in just a minute. What if the villains in Chook are named Scheme Man and Scamator? <laughs> Curse you, Scheme actually... Man! <laughs> that's not bad. Not bad names. Yeah. I, <laughs> see, I put the skirt thing on here. And um, I wanted something that was, uh, you know, who's saying he don't have pants on there, Crazy Mad? He just has that. <laughs> Maybe he's a monk or maybe he's, um, I don't know. I wanted something that kind of flowed with the wind mm-hmm. and he was sleek. I wanted the sleek design. I wanted a warrior. I wanted uh, a simple chest piece and that disc. And then, you know, it's almost got a Jedi quality to it because he puts that mm-hmm. hood on and then he looks, yeah, almost like a monk. Jedis are like monks in a lot of ways, right? Um so I guess that's some of the influence that came through. I don't know. And some of this stuff may not stick. It's concept, you know? And I think mm-hmm. that's the fun with playing with concept. You'd kind of work elements and then you go, okay, that's, I'm, I'm liking this. And, mm. and then other times you do stuff and you're like, yeah, it looks like shit. I'm going to try something else or I'm going to change <laughs> that. You know, I'm not going to have that circle in the, in the middle of his sternum there. I'm going to have, um, who knows? We'll put something else there, layers of, of metal or something like that. But uh, in that moment, I thought those designs worked well together in the circle, like the circle knobs. I got that kind of from uh, Panthro. Oh, yeah. You know, a little bit of that going on from Panthro from uh, Thundercats. <laughs> what the hell and... is a semaflange? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, those kinds of things inform like your influences inform your design just as much as what the writer would say right Mm -hmm. and i mean for me you know you guys are using elves so i'm going okay uh what informs your style about an elf you know what i mean like what tells you what to do with that elf and Mm. you know what plays into how they're going to look and what are you thinking about when you do that well, well, part of it was uh, looking at like kind of the uh, the story as a whole, like the big picture. How would I, you know, how how would I want these elves to be presented? And like I, I keep using that like the the spoiled, pampered children, you know, the 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 innocence. Um, and a lot of that, okay. you know, if you look at look at films like The Dark Crystal, you know, the Gelflings. Yeah. How they're yes. these like weak, physically inferior beings to like everything else around them, yet they come out on top. Um, yeah. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. I, like the. Uh, a lot of a lot of the aesthetics actually came from video game design, um, and and I know right. I, I know Mo's not going to like this, but a lot of it's also from the, the Eastern uh, designs. Like uh, I know uh, <laughs> Manwa and Manga have a very they have a very rigid system of character designs, which I kind of tried to break from. For example, okay. uh, Manga and anime have a very defined system of who can be the hero. Like when their hero is created. It's always a young okay. man with big eyes and he's usually kind of like got an edgy, like, you know, attitude or whatever. And then there's always the physically superior yet for some reason, 
not as powerful, older, wiser guy that's with him that's like, you know, buff or whatever. Then there's the annoying plucky girl, you know, and then there's usually (laughs) there's occasionally the siren and then there's like the the elderly wizard wizard guy or whatever. Yeah, that's generally what your archetypes fall into. And when, when I saw those, you know, and I'm constantly having this beaten into me and I'm looking at it through all of our video game stuff. Cause again, in the, in the nineties, that's basically what we had was East Asian uh, designs, uh, you know, foisted on us. Like there was no such thing as a JRPG back in the nineties. It was just right. an RPG, you know? Um, okay. And so, so when I, when I looked at things like the Gelflings and I looked at things like Link from uh, Legend of Zelda and uh Obviously, I did a whole bunch of research, uh, like with Welsh and Scandinavian uh, mythology on elves, and it was like, well, I think I'm going to go that route. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take little bits of it and then kind of kind of make it my own versus just copying exactly what they're doing. You know, like right. like like you look at like Warhammer 40k or Warhammer in yeah. general, and it's like, okay, they got the green skins and they took a nice spin on their version of the orcs versus the Tokian orcs. Like the Tokian orcs are basically corrupted elves they're they're elves you know essentially right. and you know you've got the elves mixed with men the the what's it the urukai or whatever but uh oh in, yeah, in, yeah yeah in in uh warhammer the green skins are actually mold they're fungus they're made out of mushrooms uh, okay <laughs> so that's why they're green it, yeah it, it's it's like everything that they've done is based all on mushrooms and stuff and it was like so this is just <laughs> like really dangerous vi- dangerously violent mushrooms so it's kind of cool to see that 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 spin on things. Um, in Warcraft, yeah. you know, kind of took it another step where they tried to make them like Native Americans or like cavemen meets like okay. the, the sympathetic savage, you know. And it's it's interesting, but right. I'll, it, it feels very derivative. Like I'm hoping, like, like deriving things is is fun, but like in the same way, uh, you can't show everybody your hand of what you're trying to derive from. You know, if they're like, oh, I know where you got that from, it kind of destroys the illusion. You know what yeah. I mean? Where it's like, you can say I've got influences in this and that and this, but if they're like, I know where you got that from, like, like it kind of like, oh, <laughs> right. illusion destroyed. Yeah, it's like, too much. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah. So you need to be able to use influence and balance it, but not just utterly rip it off and make it completely the same, right? Yeah, or so, yeah exactly. So recognizable that it's, you know, it's only that to them. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of play, a lot of people have done that. Um, one of the things that um, I was looking at in character design was, you know, when you when you see a character, you want to recognize it, right? Mm-hmm. You want to instantly go, yep, I know what that is and who that is. And um, part of that's cool outfits and cool, and you know, silhouette. design elements. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, silhouette is a big piece to design. Although mm-hmm. I think it's funny because not every comic character, I don't think you could ever know, you know, between unless they had their swords out or something like that. But unless yeah. they were in a certain pose, you may not be able to tell the difference between Deadpool or Spider-Man sometimes. Or, or, or Daredevil you know I mean? without the horns. Yeah. Or Daredevil. Yeah. Without the horn. I mean, there's, there's few elements that change who they are and what they are, but I mean, really it's just a guy in some spandex, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> so I, I think some elements are not always needed. Silhouette is not always needed, although it's mm. good. It's really good because, you know, I was thinking about that Batman, uh, Wolverine, you know, their silhouettes are amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Panthro. Panthro yeah. has a silhouette. You could tell him. You could tell who that is if you could see him in silhouette. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and of course, I mean, you look at any cartoon character or animated character and and uh, you know that that's that's how they do it. They do it like a silhouette to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can see almost any animated character in silhouette and know what they are. Sorry, mm. my dog's going nuts. I think my wife just got home. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, um, we're going to go nuts here for a minute. But yeah, so, but instead of focusing on the silhouette of things, though, you know, I think there's a lot of other design elements that I get into, and it's not always about uh, the silhouette. It's about color. So color mm-hmm. is a major deal. You said red was a big thing and mm-hmm. for your characters. And um I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like we didn't use color as much as we probably could have in the character design. Um, I'm not <laughs> saying that we can go there in the future or something like that, but I, I feel like um, color is a big deal, you know. Um, 
I'm always partial to the Wolverine, the brown and you know, like yellow. Yeah. Not the not the yellow and blue. Um yellow and blue's okay, but it's not nearly as cool as the brown, and I will always forever love that brown. And yeah, I don't the know pride why of the X-Men. Yeah, and I don't know why they changed it. Why'd they do that? You know? No idea. I, it's just weird. But um but they but the colors do matter a lot. And uh, I kind of wish we would have spent just a little bit more time on the colors with the characters. Yeah. <laughs> or Kimmer Diamond. To... <laughs> have you seen that on 80s Me? <laughs> no, I have not. So, so the, be story awesome. behind, the story behind the Herkimer Diamond uh, filtration system is that basically Dan Aykroyd, you know how he's made that vodka? Oh, yeah. He, he, has, a, he has a vodka in the skull bottle or whatever. He goes okay. through this big spiel. Like he made like an infomercial. It was like this half an hour spiel about how great his <laughs> his uh, uh, his vodka is, and like how he filtered it through all these different things or whatever. And then uh, he had this this guy come on this like uh, I don't know if he was like a whatever a, a vintner for for like you know creating the vodka. Hey, I'm to be. Um, who's like, he looked like a, a kidnapping video. Like he had this like really worried look on his face while he's describing the process of which the vodka was made from. But he's like, so um, Mr. Aykroyd found, told us that we had to filter it through um, through uh, Herkimer diamonds. Uh, to, and we, we didn't really think that it like had any influence on the taste, but he knows better than us, you know? Like, <laughs> and uh, 80s made is like, dude, Herkimer diamonds? He's like, do you know what a Herkimer diamond is? I'm like, no. He's like, dude, I lived near Herkimer, New York. Herkimer diamonds is just a fancy word for quartz. He's like, they're just yeah. they're just filtering it through a bunch of rocks. It's not even like real diamonds. Who Fake cares? Diamonds. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He filtered it through cubic zirconium. Like, <laughs> I was like well, oh, okay. Oh my gosh, that's good. And that's yeah. a reason not to buy his vodka. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> he's, like, he's like so sure of himself soon. It's like, dude, what the hell are you trying to sell to me, man? It's oh, awesome. Where's I'm Murph? Yeah, yeah. No Murph, no peace. I know, man. <laughs> uh, I think Murph is still sick. So, yeah. He said he was going to try to make it on the night, but didn't. So, uh, we'll catch up some other time with him. Going to keep trucking until he makes it back. I'm with Mo on the question of the week. So, yeah. <laughs> Too hot, you're not going to get in, right, Amanda? If you get burned, no way. That's where I was at. Yeah. And you should have seen my comment about Murph earlier, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to go up to it? I think we do. Oh, <laughs> right. uh, where's it at? There it is. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Dirk needs all the help he can get as a single father of a YouTube channel now that Murph has become a deadbeat dad. <laughs> <laughs> Still funny. Still <laughs> funny. <laughs> Murph is sick of working. Yeah, man. I am. I am. No, I'm not. It's all good. <laughs> um, I have heard from him. He's been doing okay. Um, or you have heard from him, but we have heard from him. Okay. Yes, I have. I mean, if that's what you're asking, yes. Um, he just, I didn't hear from him today, which makes me think, he was sick. He said he was going to try to make it on, and I didn't get an answer from him today, which I think, you know, he's been struggling with, um, like, temperature and stuff, and oh. I think that's messed with a lot of other things for him. So um, struggling long-term with it. I hope he's able to get over it. But it's been like, man, it's going on like a month. It's been crazy. Yeah, that's so, not good. Yeah, really bad. So welcome, Amanda. Welcome, Dean. And uh, yeah, 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 there's proof of life. Don't worry, I talked to him yesterday. He's gonna make Today. a video about yeah. Herkimer diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's gonna say, I want a Herkimer diamond in the chest plate of this character. <laughs> <laughs> Add it to his armor. I want it shiny. I'm gonna try to get him on Gym Shock with uh, Mandy. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, well, the tagline was, uh, you know, Dolomite, uh, Dolomite's tagline, bitch, are you for real? Like that was the Herkimer <laughs> Diamond tagline. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Murph has left Dirk on the porch waiting to pick him up. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> man, I feel like Murph's crazy made Dirk seem like the rational one. I, you know, <laughs> you're not far off there, Jay. You're not far off. <laughs> 
now we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no doubt, man. Murph's been struggling with his gender identity. Oh, crap. What? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even want to go there, man. I don't even want to go there. Murph is just a boy waiting for Dirk to love him. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> you complete ah, <laughs> Shit. I wish that, I could quit That's awesome. <laughs> Murph would laugh so hard at that, he'd probably piss himself. <laughs> oh, man, that's good stuff. But, yeah, I'm just waiting to be loved. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, see, no mercy, man. No mercy. <laughs> All right, I'm just a Murph standing in front of a Dirk asking him to love me. <laughs> <laughs> Broke back ballad. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, that's oh, fantastic, sorry. man. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um, damn, I don't even know if I can get back on subject now. You guys have pulled me way out of here. <laughs> yeah, way out of here. <laughs> I had such a good subject too. What are you? What are you doing to me? Murph is busy <laughs> making a top secret trailer for the channel in the style of the infamous Ugly Tongue trailer. That is true. He's probably needing to make that up to me because man, that was dirty, rotten stuff he did. There. <laughs> this is why Dean and I are rivals. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Whoo. Yeah. How do I recover? How do I recover? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we need like a, a screen wipe, <laughs> yeah. like a fancy transition. Oh man, I was I was leaving this for Mo, but I'm gonna have to do it for you guys now. Don't, don't carry be brutal. on like that. Yo, don't carry on like that. There you go. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, um. Speaking the subject. Of, uh, yeah. Speaking of character design, if you look at the lovely. Uh, uh, virgin trophies i have back here Ooh, um, that's nice from, i like it for, yeah they're from the uh the game overwatch which uh i'm not going to say they right. they originated it from overwatch but let's just say that i worked with uh some of the people that that made those designs um oh, that's and cool. that's cool yeah they they like actually like too. yeah well well they actually they did start with silhouette and and maybe that's because it's from a video game because you yeah. have to quickly identify something as yeah. a threat and what it can and cannot right. do. So mm -hmm. when you look at these figures, they originally started out as simple geometric shapes, like uh, the pink Ed 209 down here, uh, Diva in the mecha suit. She was just basically like a lollipop, a circle with two uh, twigs. Oh, and wow. that was the, yeah, that was how the silhouette read. Um, then you have uh, like Doomfist here, who was just a stick guy with a big arm. So you'd always, whenever you saw something with a big arm, you knew it was him. Um, and then, I don't know if you can see uh, the purple chick. Oh. <laughs> no, it, it's never going to happen, Jay. Exit you only. Love, you can't force it. Yeah. Well, in, didn't Genesis, or is that, or is that um, Phil Collins, you can't hurry, love? You just can't do it. <laughs> you just have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Love don't come easy there, Jay. It's cool, except for the whole Overwatch thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. In fact... Um, I think it's great to hear about that stuff. I love to hear how things come about like that. Let, let me show you kind of something that I'm probably yeah, not supposed to show anybody. But uh, screw them. They... they, they uh, let me, let's see. Screw them. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, let's see. Uh, systems. Okay. Um, I think I can... I like how your room went dark and red, like you're gonna, like you're dropping <laughs> into the silos here. Yeah, these are some of the the games that I had worked on. Um, but Man, that's awesome. As, as you can see here, um, these are the original uh, characters for Firefall, and if you notice, okay. like the, when I was on the design team. Um, we had designed their abilities slotted out that are very similar to what we see in Overwatch. For example, here, here's a male version of uh, Widowmaker. She's got the sniper. He's got the sniper rifle. He's got a hook shot. Uh, he can go into stealth. That was something that uh, uh, we had added uh, a stealth bubble for group stealth. The uh, shared intelligence network detector, which later became uh, uh, Widowmaker's uh, ultimate, where she can you know see through walls and stuff. Um, right. An anti-vehicle mine, which became the poison poison mine that she had. 
uh, and a flechette gun. Um, but yeah, it, you can see kind of with the characters in the background like this, like these are their silhouettes. Like look at this gargantuan arm here. This is the what later became Torbjorn, the uh, engineer okay. dwarf. You know, for the last time, I'm Swedish. But uh, yeah, it was the the kind of the uh, silhouette was like this big honking like wrench style arm, and you know they obviously had the turret and all that stuff. Damn. Um, and then the uh, the kind of your straightforward soldier who later uh, kind of got repurposed for both Soldier seventy six and uh, uh, Reinhardt the uh, the hammer guy. Uh, you can see some of those abilities, but you also notice from the silhouette, it's got these big clunky boots that have uh, jet jets on them. Um, and then kind of a smaller upper half with these like little protrusions out the back. And it's got things like the forward shield uh, that Reinhardt is known for and kind of a, a like a afterburner, which was like the bull charge. And then a character here that also got repurposed into other characters uh, becoming, uh, uh, what's his face? Lucio, the, uh, the, uh, uh, whatever he is, the Brazilian skater, whatever, but he, he he's the healing class. And in this silhouette, we've got these big honking turbine like things coming out of his back. Yeah, that's really and, cool. you know, it's, yeah, it's easy to recognize like from afar, right. but you can see that like it becomes a, a quick and easy visual language that someone can parse at a glance where they're like, okay, I see this. I know what it's capable of because it has a very limited rollout of, okay, it's going to do a healing aura or a speed boost or a, um, or, or, you know, something to that effect, but, uh, yeah, or poison cloud, but it's not going to be a very long range character. Whereas this is something that, you know, if I see pr pretty much a stick man with no real identifying, uh, qualities, because you, you don't want this character to be poking out, but if you see it, you know, you know, it's capable of long range and it's something you should be worried about and you can actually adapt your tactics, uh, you know, accordingly. So, it was interesting seeing that kind of uh, from from the kind of the ground up when when they were designing these characters. I wish I still had some of the notes on some of the aesthetics of as far as uh, you know what those uh, initial kind of primordial shapes were. Like this was a triangle. You can still uh -huh. kind of see wide, and this was an upside down triangle with spikes, and right. then like the, the basically a figure with a the big arm, and then this was just your generic stick figure. Yeah, which. Uh, you know, um, I think they were talking about some different uh, shapes representing different things, like the circle is supposed to represent a peaceful character, which I didn't mm -hmm. realize that. And uh, then they were saying the square is more of a, like, self-assured, uh, cocky warrior, you know. Yeah, the tanky. Yeah. And triangles usually represented some kind of, like, you know, villain or something like nefarious something underhanded uh clever things like that i thought mm. that was an interesting way to think of it but i don't go into my design thinking like that to be honest um mm. i think i go more in with influence and thought about what i'm looking to achieve with the character than i am uh like a shape in mind or a silhouette even and i'm not saying silhouette's bad i'm just saying i don't think of it i mm. want i want um the design element to have purpose. You know what I mean? So I'm not just going to give him something and then not have him have it be there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm doing it for a certain like aesthetic or, you know, because it represents something for the character or I want it to have a focal point, you know, like you were saying, when I designed that one, that chest plate, it draws your eye right into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like right into the, yeah. Like, like, like I was saying, it looks like a, the war harness of, of He-Man with like the yeah. mirror armor and mirror armor is like really cool. It's that Middle Eastern, you know, circular right. disc on the, and it, yeah, your eye goes right to it. So yeah, and I that's, think that's really cool. Yeah. And I, I want to do that. And so I'm not trying to, I don't know, I guess I'm not trying to make it look a certain way in silhouette. I'm just trying to make sure it's what they're wearing is on purpose and or has an, has a reason, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, behind it. And then, you know, cause I see all kinds of people just ripping other characters off all the time. And I'm like, well, you doing, do you even know why you're making the character look like that? Or, you know, could you explain to somebody why you want them like that? Oh my God, dude. And, I And good, good creators will, they'll be able to say, yeah, I want this and I want that. And, but other creators, they, I think they're just trying to, you know, they like what they like. And I think that's great. 
but yeah, I want to hear the character and why, you know? Well, I, I, I've worked with a lot of concept artists in the gaming industry and some of them are absolutely amazing and some of them just want to put their stink on yeah. something. And it's so frustrating. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. Like, like we, we were uh, con one of the studios I was working for, we were contacted to uh, to make a, an, Elric, an Elric of Mel Nimide uh, game. Okay. Clearly it, it oh, never came to fruition. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Elric, Elric um, you know, Moorcox, like basically the anti-Conan. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's the Witcher meets uh, the Lich King essentially. Or okay. <laughs> oh Jesus! I'm sorry, I had to read this. <laughs> Dirt games to take the toxic heteronormativity. I, I'm trying to say no. that right. Heteronormativity. <laughs> heteronormativity. Yeah, normativity it should have been normativity. I think out of <laughs> Kevin Smith's He Man, Murph adds the secret ingredient: love. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I didn't God. play the song long enough for you, Mo. I just. Didn't. <laughs> Okay. I mean, there are so many creators that don't even have good logos, let alone character designs. It's yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's true too. People slap whatever up there and just think it's okay and not spend a lot of time on it. I agree. Yeah. But well, and sometimes that works. Sometimes that's okay, but most of the time not. Well, but yeah, well, they, go, go ahead and finish what you were gonna say. Sorry, I, I, I get rambly. It's my loudmouth uppity Asian oh no orientalist. <laughs> um but uh <laughs> No, um, <laughs> so I, I guess the, the point I was trying to make was that there are some artists out there that never really give into consideration, um, like the, the, the function, like form should follow function. Yeah. And they're just, yeah. they, they care more about putting their own stink on stuff. And when yeah. we were contacted to do the Elric stuff, no, none of them read the books. Like, like that always bothered me when I got oh, into the gaming man. industry and yeah. there were these nerds who were too cool for school. It's like, dude, you're freaking working on video games. You're just as big as right. a dork as me, you know? No, <laughs> I'm so good, you know? So they, uh, they're they like, Fist, did you ever read uh, Elric? I'm like, hell yeah. They're like, well, what's it about? So I, I told it to them and they're like, oh, okay. I guess we can get the audio tapes or the audio books or whatever. Oh. Like, you know, they, they couldn't read. Oh. So, so they read this shit and they presented their, their, um, their concept art. And before they presented it to HBO or whomever had, who had approached yeah. us to make this stuff, they showed it to me and one of the IT guys that I was friends with. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look anything like Elric. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, first of all, he has a big <laughs> runic blade called, called Morn Blade that it looks just like the Witch King's uh, Frostmorn. So you got to make it like that, but just a black blade. And he's like, well, I like this one. And instead he had like, a, like if you've ever seen like a, a, a Kanda, which is a like it's got like a pendulum on the end of it. It's not like a like a sword that comes to a point. It's like a like a chopper sword. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that round. Yeah. So he made it like yeah. that. I'm like that's not what it looks like. And then he's sitting on a wooden throne. And I'm like, if, <clears throat> if you read the first freaking chapter, they talk. They go into insane detail, like Stephen King levels of detail <laughs> about the ruby throne this guy sits on. What the hell is that? You know? And they're like, you go to hell. You go to hell and die. You know? And they just you know. <laughs> Like I was a pariah over there, you know. I was just freaking, uh, you know. So then they showed at HBO, and they're like, "Yeah, this doesn't look anything like what we asked you to make. What the hell is this?" And I'm like, gosh. "Told you, you know." Wow. Like, yeah, yeah, and it, I hate yeah. that. It's and especially if you're trying to match something that already exists, you gotta yeah. you gotta make sure that it's you know hitting those um, narratives, you know, that they put in there. Um, yeah. You know the aesthetic qualities, and that's what I was talking about. Um, you know, a purpose of a character is to achieve storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what do you think the ultimate storytelling technique is? The ultimate storytelling? Yeah. Jeez. If I, I have an answer, but you yeah. don't have the answer. I mean, if you don't get it, it's all good, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I, At least what I think is. Yeah, so, I, I, I think I'm still learning. <laughs> I mean, people call exaggeration that, and comic books are perfect examples of exaggeration, right? Oh, yeah. There's no room um, for subtlety in the printed image. Yeah. And um, so exaggeration is, I mean, that's why we have the muscles. So when people go, oh, no, I hate, you know, muscle bound guys in comics. And I'm like, but that's, there's a reason why we do that. And it's, um, there's a lot of reasons why we do that. It's not just one reason. And, um, you know, it also helps us fantasize more about the characters and about the world they live in. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it and it becomes even more believable sometimes because you know that the guy who looks like that, like Conan, you know, yeah. you know, he could be brutal enough in a world like Mo. He could be brutal, <laughs> but, 
where he could oh, take man. on that world. You know what I mean? And he could actually, um, yeah, fight and survive and uh, uh, just kill anything that tried to cross him, mm -hmm. you know? And if we don't exaggerate like that, we're not, you would never believe that, you know, another character who was scrawny and just this little dude could ever do that. So it doesn't make well, sense. Well, they, they even go that, that way into video games and in toys, like, like a yeah. battle ax, like a, a medieval battle ax is not anywhere near what we see in like Conan films or, or yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And there's a reason for that because in yeah. reality, a battle ax will not benefit from being chunky, like a chunky blade. It needs mm -hmm. to be thin so they can slide into when you're hacking someone. Right. Right. Whereas, you know, if you ever seen like the, the Tay bars or whatever, they're like little, you know, it's like the design on your, uh, uh, next to your microphone, but only it's very thin, you know, it's very light. So they can, yeah. you know, well, whereas and, you look at the you barbarian know. axe, freaking huge. Yeah. And if, you know, and if you're going up against a sword, um, you're definitely not going to get the speed on a sword. You know, the sword is nope. going to take you every time because yep. they can get in close with a sword. Whereas you can't do that with a big wonky, like heavy, you know, um, and that's really where it's at. Now, I mean, I did create this for Mare, and mm -hmm. it's got these, it's a weird shaped axe, and this big mm -hmm. ball probably wouldn't work, you know? And I know that, but it I don't want to care about that, you know? You want to think yeah, about this not about... fantastic blade and this cool thing that you've never seen before, and then he can flip it over, and it's like a fat hammer on this side, <laughs> where he just, yeah. So if you think about him hitting into a giant's shin bone, Ooh. with a flat hammer you know what's that doing that's got to be splintering yeah. those chin bones, yeah. right that's what i figured that's why i went into the exaggeration of that of that battle axe to be that kind of design element because it's when i thought of it and imagined him going up against them and standing between giant legs because they're bigger than him mm -hmm. he's going to be able to take them out even though he's smaller because he's got this thing that can just splinter Halo splintering, just splintering <laughs> uh, those shin bones, man. And I love that visual in my head. That That is a cool visual in my head to think of a hero doing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. partly, I think, why we like the hobbits, too, because they're little, but they can do a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. Seen and, and things like that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dirt gave him a badass battle axe to distract everyone from his skirt. <laughs> well, Mare don't have a skirt, man. <laughs> this is Mare. Mare has the battle axe, just so you know. But yeah. yeah. Is, and notice I didn't even have an axe on the end of there. I didn't even know what to put on the end of that thing when this was a concept. This was concept art. And so, but this is that design element. So you can see there's the bird element in Mare's armor. Mm -hmm. And if you look zoom in on it um i used try to whoa a little too close there um but there you go i tried to use the bird element to inform where the armor goes how it lays out and what's going on with it and if you notice you know there's the eyes of the bird the beak up here in mm -hmm. the chest plate and then the wings wrap around his back and then the tail even goes down in between here with the uh, loincloth. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, and so it's a focal point. It's a design element. And I thought that would be great to use for several armors from where Mare comes from, you know, because it's more of like a family crest. It's something that they use to uh, like their kingdom uses, this, you know, that design element in many different ways for their guard and for their you know, uh, royal family or whatever you could come up with there. So I thought it was fun to use. In the concept art, he was <laughs> wanking a giant with a skinny oh, dog. Damn. <laughs> damn, Mo. Damn. <laughs> I'd ask what is, what is Celestial is, but Murph doesn't share details with the artist. I mean, that's damn true. And, and I couldn't go into it even if I knew, guys. So there you go. The giant's name is Needle Dick the Defensive. <laughs> <laughs> He's very defensive about his ina inadequacies. Yes, I would say so. I would say so. Um, <laughs> if I fall from, don't you judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too fun. 
but you know, <laughs> I think um, I would like to see some more design from people that's that's got some, some uh, focal points, got some. You know, I always loved Alex Ross's design for that because he was able to take a visual mm-hmm. and uh, and make that a part of the armor or the or the outfit. And he could actually, you know, um, make you know what what the theme of that character was, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. A lot of people may not like Alex Ross. Uh, I don't love everything he does, but I like certain things. And um, I definitely liked how he could come up with uh, designs and redesign some of the, you know, our favorite characters over the years. Hmm. And do that, you know, and, and he was able to be kind of original with it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's a hard thing to do, and it's hard to make them still look pretty cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so it, you got to take that design. You can't, it, when you're twisting it, you can't twist it too much askew because then it loses what it was originally intended to, you know. But at the same yeah, time, if you exactly. don't twist it enough, you're just replicating somebody else's design. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Fee-fi-fo-fifth, the G-spot is a myth. <laughs> That's so oh wrong. Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Where has my show gone, man? That's right. I want to go. Where are we going? We're going to the depths. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and then the other, and then one of the final things, you know, I think we look at, you know, we, we talk about recognizing it and distinction um what are you know the other aesthetics to the character that you've added uh weapons or things they carry things that you adorn them with uh you know those extra little things that finish a character you know what Hmm. i mean so how did you come up with stuff like that oh my gosh um my dog's getting vicious back there well, I, I think a lot of it, uh, a lot of their kind of accoutrement came from kind of the, what their roles were in the story. Like, uh, let, let me see if I can bring up some. Uh, I'm going to go red again. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, go back to game stream. There we are. Um, so here we Let's see. Uh, ITC1. So uh, as we can see with. Uh, some of the characters here, yeah. Um, you know, we, we have a few accoutrement like his his armor, and like I was talking about the bare feet. Everybody's got like, at least the elves. Um, and then notice there's no there's no steel or iron or any ferrous metal or silver um, okay. because in this world it doesn't exist. And that was based off of uh, like our own kind of uh, the Scandinavian myths about uh, the Yahalsafar and the uh, the Fey. Where okay. iron is a bane to the fairies or to the fae, oh, and uh, wow. okay. yeah, silver is an anti. Silver has a, a certain purity to it, and it has an anti magic quality. That's why silver is, was used for like killing werewolves, and for you know uh, being like safety charms. And and I wanted to give them their own kind of uh, their own visual uh, like weapons design, like. You know, right. I, I see that a lot in like it always bothered me in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, where you had elves and they were basically just humans with pointy ears. Right. Like, like whereas this, like, like you wouldn't see like one of these guys walking around with like a broadsword or like some European style cruciform blade. Yes. Right. Um, so, so I gave them, you know, again the 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 brass uh, or brass or bronze or whatever the, the alloy is or what it looks like um, has okay. its own kind of leafy crystalline and design. Why not gold? Well, gold's are very, yeah, very, very heavy and very soft. Um, okay. And, you know, they, they, they can use it for, for jewelry or whatever, or, you know, like the brooches or, but as far as like uh, weaponry and, you know, metallurgy goes, they're probably, they're, what they're basically using is something called oracalcum, which is, okay. uh, uh, I think that was, I can't remember, was the Romans or the Latin, someone, basically it's, it was the, they, it was an ancient metal that, uh, and this is our own world describing it. Like it's an ancient metal yeah, that yeah. the Romans had described, but they don't know if it was bronze or brass or whatever. They just know that okay. it was of a golden, like aura, aura being gold, uh, kind of a golden tinge. And they're not entirely sure. They said that it actually had the like the tensile strength of uh, certain types of iron. Um, oh wow! So 
yeah, and it was like lost. Like we don't know what happened to it. The Greeks had it and it's gone. So, and the reason why bronze uh, and non-ferrous metals were kind of superior uh, in many regards to like the, the irons and steels that we had back in the ancient world was that they weren't as uh, subject to uh, oxidation and rust. Like they would get this green patina around it and you could just bang it off and you'd have your weapon in your or your piece of armor or whatever in full, you know, perfect condition. And there's actually right. a Chinese sword, uh, a double bladed Chinese sword that uh, historians, I can't remember, some archaeologists dug it up. And the thing is like thousands of years old and it looks like it was just made. Like there's no rust on oh, it or no. anything. It's in perfect condition. That so I awesome. figured... Yeah, I figured attributing something like that to this yeah. ageless, you know, these people that, you know, get, never never get old, the, the pretty young 20-somethings versus this yeah. guy over here who's like, I'm rotten. The old <laughs> yep, the <Yeah>. old goop. <laughs> well, you know, um, that's, that's more of what I was thinking with my character was something that's more elegant with him. And it's mainly because, you know, when you think of monks or you think of somebody who's more studied in a uh, spiritual um, uh, I don't know, realm, um, you know, they, they tend to have more elegant weapons, um, not something blunt and just, you know, not something even just like a broadsword. I didn't want to go back to the broadsword. I wanted to do something that was a little more, I don't know, long, slender, something he could use to dance it's almost like a kung fu i was thinking a little bit of kung fu influence um with this character that he could you could see him starting off with the hood but when he took it down and then he started moving he could do something um with a longer weapon and i didn't want it oh, to yeah. be a stab but you know i wanted it to have a blade on it and um i want it to be something that's uh oh more pretty beautiful you know what i mean it's not just mm -hmm. a blunt, straight weapon. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, well, have kind you, of like uh, what you have. Have you ever arms. heard of? Yeah, have you ever heard of uh, the YouTuber Lindy Beige? No. Or I Scolo haven't. Gladiatorio? <laughs> no. <Nope>. Um, <laughs> okay, so so I'm a, I'm a big nerd when it comes to weapons and stuff. And okay. uh, Matt Easton over at Scolo Gladiatoria, and later on uh, uh, Lloyd over at Lindy Beige. They they do these medieval reenactment things, and they they oh, prove cool. how the spear they, they prove the spear was superior to the sword. And oh they yes, showed, I've heard this before. Not, yeah, not from, it, but I've heard I've heard that the spear and the uh, pike is actually mm -hmm. superior to the sword. Well, so. well, the pike is a good formation weapon, meaning that like right. you get a bunch of guys together, and nobody's coming in at you. But like right. with the spear in a one on one, somebody with a spear versus somebody with a sword. The guy with the spear has a huge reach advantage, has a rate like range. He's got speed. He's got, especially when you start attaching things to the to the head of the spear, like a bill hook or a, an axe blade, so you can thrust and stab them. You can swing and chop them, or you got a hook and you can pull them in, and trap pull their arm. Back, yeah. And uh, they showed even with a shield, a guy with a sword was out was uh, at a disadvantage because the guy with the spear did something called the high low high where he stabbed high, stabbed low, stabbed high, and the guy with the shield's trying to do this, and he ended up getting it over. He, like, tricked the guy to lower his shield and stabbed okay. him right in the face. <laughs> Damn. So, <laughs> That's <yeah>. awesome. <laughs> um, Mo Big says, all Murph asked was that Dirk help him keep the storytelling fresh and sharp by banging it off once in a while, but Dirk wasn't willing to accommodate him. <laughs> you got that shit right, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> you got that shit right. Definitely oh God. not willing to accommodate. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. So, but that's um, those kind of things to me. It does interest me. You know, um, I did think about that because our friend Brent, who we gave some credit to in the in Ballad of Celestials, we were talking about this, and he was like, you know, they they proved the spear was uh, definitely a superior weapon, and it's in, it's interesting because the sword is romanticized throughout history. Oh, as yeah. being this great thing. Well, it's a status. And it symbol. is a great weapon. Yeah, and it is a status thing, um, but it's not always useful, and um, nope. it's not always the best thing to use. So, you know, it's in those kinds of elements is what I was thinking of when I designed this, and I was like, I don't want to go traditional sword. I want something different, and that's mm. part of that recognizable thing and that thing that makes him stand out a little bit. Um, I I wanted to go with something just off a little bit from where even what I would want 
you know, more often than not, because I really do love swords. I love to see swords. Oh, yeah. um, Same here. <laughs> and especially with my main characters. And then the side characters can have all the funky, weird stuff all the time. And that's just kind of the way I go. But mm -hmm. not for any reason other than just trying to, um, I don't know, I think keep the sword at the forefront. But yeah, yeah, I definitely don't want to do that with this character. Um, so anyway, <laughs> are you going to give him like a special points? Yeah, are you going to give him like a, a spear spear, or are you going to like put something funky on the spearhead? Or no, it was more of like what you had with that elf, where it's got like this long blade at the end. Oh, uh, like and a maybe glaive. The spear. Yeah, and then something. I, I like the curvature to it too, and maybe something that's got some flow, so that he. Like I said, it, it's almost like this dance, you know, and um, I could see him in that in that outfit. I thought of him as doing more moves like a martial art, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the uh, one of the weapon uh, skills, like, you know, how in, in D&D you have weapon proficiencies in the uh, in, in the Infinitel game, you have weapon skills and it generally encompasses a certain type of weapon. And it's like, yeah. There, there's one of the elfin uh, martial arts for weapons is called Donzadrain, which is okay. uh, Celtic. It, it's a uh, old style ohm or uh, ancient Celtic, and it basically means a uh, dance of thorns. And it's a Ooh. it's a it's a chain with uh, basically like shurikens every few uh, oh every gosh. few links, and it's got a weight at the end like a meteor hammer. So you got this guy swinging it around, and he <laughs> kicks it, and it just like a chainsaw across. Him. Oh my gosh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome to think about some of the weapons they did. They're so nasty. But um, yeah, I want something that he can, you know, he's either able to <laughs> manipulate it or very elegant, you know, in his fighting style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh, these guys. Remember that get, get right in your face, like the intimidation factor? You're like, you're in your formation in the room and you got the scootum up there and all of this floppy things like, <laughs> ah, ah, get that out of my face. <laughs> the Romans were rooted that day. <laughs> Floppiest oh, Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be, it would, it would be uh, Placid oh, Maximus or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Flaccid Maximus. <laughs> Flaccid Maximus. <laughs> Dildo spears are very elegant. Yes. Yeah. They're well, very it's, elegant. Yeah. It's more effective when your opponent is running away from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic, man. Oh, oh God. shit. That's good stuff. <laughs> so. I think we've hit all the elements. I mean, everything Absolutely. that I was wanting to talk about tonight, Hell yeah. those are the things I'm looking for when I'm designing characters. And um, no, not floppy dildos. That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking for so much more than that. Um, <laughs> but I think we hit all the, all the big topics. I mean, can you think of anything that we didn't cover um, other uh -huh. than... Uh, environment oh environment yeah. that they come from so we we're talking mm -hmm. about world building and you talked about piecing the puzzles together um aesthetic qualities that you know they live in like like why are they that way and what kind mm -hmm. of environment do they grow up in so yeah how does that influence your design of the character well i mean you clearly when you look at the character you should have some signal as to what like kind of climate or what uh, environment they come from like you, you wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't put like a guy in thick heavy furs or something and be like oh dude that's totally like a guy that lives like in like the desert you know <laughs> like yeah, yeah he'd be incinerated <laughs> yes. or you know yeah. a guy that's totally naked you know with like a g string and like uh, yeah he's out in the, the the arctic or whatever it's like what kind of comic <laughs> is this <laughs> but uh, i mean occasionally cool. they you know back in the day like frazetta he didn't care I mean, if you've seen no. Fire and Ice, you got that awesome chick there with the, yeah, and she's out there, oh yeah, and nothing but a couple of things of dental floss, and it's like, exactly. damn, there's icebergs, like, <laughs> right, but I mean, yeah. and visually everything was awesome though. I mean, you just, oh yeah, it was amazing to watch that. And, I, um, I miss that. I miss that aesthetic. I miss when people yeah. just didn't give a shit, and it was like, this is a heavy metal cover, you know, like a Molly Hatchet cover from Boris Vallejo, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, I want to be I in mean, that world. It's terrible, but I want to be there. <laughs> well, and that's partly why you know Kevin. He was like, I don't want Mer, I don't want Mayor to go without. Like, I don't want him to be without a shirt because early on mm-hmm. in the book we have him go without a shirt. But he's like, I don't want him to just be that way. There's a reason he's shirtless right now, but he can't be shirtless all the time. And I was like, why not? Like, I love Conan because he's shirtless all the time. I love, I like to see these characters, which, you know, like, like this guy right here, you know, he has this chest thing, but it's, he's <clears throat> virtually, you know, shirtless. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't care. It just looks cool. I'm not, I'm not worried about, oh, does he get cold? Because even Crazy Mad was like, Man, that'll be a tough winter for you know. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's cold, but I don't give a shit. I'm like, he looks cool as fuck. I I don't want to think about you know all that all the time. Although, you know, it's not smart writing all the time either. But you get, you know, at some point you just want to take those risks and have fun and make that character mm-hmm. cool as hell. You know. Yeah, th- there is um, that fine line. Stand like, out. You can't be. You can't take the world too seriously, or you run the risk of making it absurd. <laughs> And you can't take right. it too too like lackadaisical because then you end up with like what the SJWs have done to our media. You know, there's yes. that fine line. You've got to be like, there's a cool factor, but there's also a reason for that cool. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That's it. Spirit Club shirtless men confirmed. It's true. Fabulous. What can I say? <laughs> My arms are up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. Dude. And the five elements of Dong Fu. That's what Jay says. And to Dong Fu, thanks for everything, Kevin Murphy. <laughs> Julie my, Newmar. My Sifu. Yeah, yeah, my Sifu was long, fat Dong. <laughs> Bahaha Mo. And then exactly. And then Dirk loves you. Yeah, okay, so we got through it all, guys. Oh, my gosh. No mercy tonight. No mercy. Yeah, no shirts either. No shirts. So, <laughs> damn. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, um, I, I love those heavy metal color covers. I love Frazetta. Frazetta. I mean, he is my favorite of all time. Mm. And you're right. You don't see risks being taken very yeah. often anymore. So it's all corporate designed, you know. And it's. That's where the indies, man. Yeah. Indies are where it innovates. Yeah. And um, and, the, and the one element that I'm not liking with fantasy right now is mm-hmm. uh, the oversized, like, you can't see my hands are off screen, with the blades that are, like, bigger than the person. And oh, yeah. You, you know what? Like you know where that comes from, right? And then they got yeah. the wide blades. Yeah. That, that no, comes I don't from, know. Uh, that actually comes from video games um, because okay. <clears throat> back in the day – when we only had eight bit and sixteen bits, you had to make these gargantuanly obnoxious weapons because if they were proportionate to the size of the sprite, then you'd look like the guy was just punching. Like you wouldn't have any reach or anything. <laughs> and that was why it was so funny when Final Fantasy VII came out and Cloud yeah. Strife had the the Buster Sword, and it was like yeah. that guy's stringy little arms couldn't lift that that plane <laughs> propeller for his no. life depended on it. Yes, but, yeah, that was so ridiculous. They, and the handle. The handle is like this, yeah, like, like my finger, yeah. and the blade's like a mile wide. I'm like, no, yep. this is, I can't do this. I can't even imagine it. It just seems stupid yeah. to me. It, it is, and it's so absurd, but it's like, <sighs> it's typical Japanese, you know, this is how we've yeah. always done it. So they've never, they, <laughs> like, you got Sephiroth with this no dachi that's like, yeah. <clears throat> that's like 15 <laughs> feet long. It's like, by the time you swing that thing, I've stabbed you about a hundred times. Like, yes, that's what I'm, <laughs> unless you use it as a shield. I don't yeah. know. Oh. But, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. So yeah. I thought it was hilarious when the Final Fantasy VII remake came out and they said they made Tifa's tits smaller to be more realistic and Cloud still had that damn sword. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The tits more real- that was frustrating, man. <laughs> God, God bless the PC mods that put those jubblies back to their original size. <laughs> you know, I want to oh see some God. nuclear, some nuclear level yeah. dairy cannons there. Man, that's the thing. I mean, so we're back to exaggeration again. <laughs> well, it's but, you know, people want to see that. You know, it's people want to yeah, see I mean, buff dudes kicking it, kicking ass. People want to see hot chicks. Like, yeah, it's true. Um, well, if I'm going to imagine myself as a hero, I want to imagine yeah. a, like a badass mofo, not some little scrawny ass <laughs> little. <prick. clears throat> Dead Bond like- hero. 
<laughs> oh, oh, can we wait five minutes? The sword is really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Oh, that's good. Oh, my gosh. God, my gout's kicking no, it. Can we, can and, we take a rest? <laughs> okay. When we have a meetup, I'm totally wearing a shirt, Crazy Mad says. <laughs> so, I mean, you don't have to worry about that, Crazy Mad. Murph will like it better than me, so I'll just let him go. <laughs> you have to worry about him more than me, for sure. Murph showing up in that. He showed yes. up on that with that armor. <laughs> That's right. Maybe not even that. Maybe a thong. He might just come yeah. out. Oh. I wouldn't allow him in my car that way, though. Yeah, no put way. a towel down first. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap a towel around him. That's what I would yeah. do. That like e. shit. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Why, why, why is there oh, all this plastic down? <laughs> well, if he only knew we were doing this on his expense. What's yeah. that? No, What'd you say? Saying, why, why, why is all the furniture wrapped in plastic? <laughs> it's because he's in the thong. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. I don't know what happened. I went out for a sec. Oh, yeah. yeah Can you hear some, me? Yeah, we got some Roboto going. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that wasn't me? good. I had a great oh. stream up until this point. We must have no been me. having the boys. They probably think I'm done streaming, so they're like, okay, time to download. Yeah, Fortnite. They do that with their games. <laughs> yeah. Man. Oh, shit. I'm freezing up bad now. Uh-oh. Damn, I'm doing it bad. Don't believe him, Crazy yeah. Mad. Dirk likes the shirt on. It leaves more to his imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well, Jay. <laughs> I never said anything about pants, Jay Ryan. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Damn, damn, damn. Well, okay, that pretty much covered it. I mean, I, I really just wanted to go into um, design of a character and having fun with that. And I think, um, you know, I kind of want to hit on some of this stuff again, where we can talk about um, what informs a character and how we change them and the dynamic piece to a character. And so we're going to start off with the design, but that's not where we end up with the character at all. And, um, you know, that's, it's more about how we create and where we go with the story elements. Cause really we don't talk about story elements either in, in these streams. A lot of times it's just art or, uh, just the crowdfunding aspect, but we don't talk about where we take characters and why and how. And, um, you know, what informs the story and things like that. So I want to kind of get into that and what breaks down a comic book, you know, mm -hmm. especially for new, new creators, people who have not done this yet and get into maybe, you know, what makes a comic book tick a little bit mm -hmm. um, more than just, okay, you draw, then you ink, then you, you know, slap some <laughs> color on it and yeah. letters and we're good to go. You know what I mean? Yep. So, Yeah. Uh, great stream. Optimistic. Are we Dirk? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Optimistic about what? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that Although like I feel good. Seen. I feel good. Um, and all the, the homoerotic stuff home. going on in this stream tonight. No, I don't know. I might go out of here and feel a little depressed. <laughs> 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 so... I'm thinking, mate, I don't know, Jay. I just got to think. I got to rethink everything, you know? <laughs> yeah. When I, I'm questioning my life. <laughs> oh, no. But, uh, <laughs> no, I feel good, good about everything. We'll, we'll see where we're going after this. The printer, the printers had our comic for, for oh, over a week. The printer has had his comic for over a week. <laughs> oh no. I went out. I think he, there? Yeah, you are you are like I'm looking at I like think. I'm looking at like a looks like a bunch of Legos on the screen. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, that is like. Hey, I'm back. Whoa! Holy shit! What, <laughs> yeah, what happened? I don't know. That that's what, like, Woo. yeah, it was like, and it was it was bugging out pretty bad. Like, like I got like Damn, it was like I, that I think, world. <clears throat> you know, and it's it's really weird. Um, we've been losing our internet, like. My boys, you know, we'll just be going about our day and, and Caden, he's on computer quite a lot. And he's like, look, it just went down to nothing. Like it just drops and we don't have any signal. And uh, so we're trying to figure this out. We're having some issues with that, but I don't know. I don't mm. know if we'll get to it or not. Might be a router issue or a modem. It could Those be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could be. We might need to buy a new one. Till Dirk opens up to Murph, it'll be cloudy days ahead. <laughs> <laughs> time dirt <clears throat> casey's effing with the internet she said bedtime <laughs> <laughs> and dirt <-ception>. yeah <laughs> i love that i'll have to use that word playing the imposter yeah <laughs> <laughs> no what i was just saying um we're gonna have to have more streams where we talk about you know about these elements again and then um you know i was going to give an update on the book we've had the the book at the printer for over a week and uh, we're just kind of waiting on a proof right now for the first proof. And then once nice. we get that, um, we're hoping that, um, you know, we'll go with the rest of the books and then get fulfillment started. We do have one print to get made. And I have about 20 uh, sketch cards to draw up, which Ooh. I can have done pretty quickly, actually. And um, oh, nice. And then I think we're going to be done with everything and be ready to ship out. So oh, nice. it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to think about, man. It's like, yeah, who kind of scary <clears throat> because it's like this is uncharted territory now, so we've never been this level. And what are we going to do after we fulfill? Like, you know, where do we start <laughs> next? You know what I mean? Round like, two. <laughs> yeah, because how do we start over and, and do it all again and uh, well, that, build from there, dude? That's what I found extremely like. I feel like it's postpartum depression because it's yeah. like I got the thing out, I got the book out, I got it fulfilled. Now it's sitting on Amazon. You know, and it's like, I can't show book two stuff yet because I don't have enough of it substantially created. Like, I don't want to start the hype up and be like too early for the hype. And people are like, yeah, yeah, we've already seen that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we've already seen that. You know, I want right, right. to have enough. Of, but it's like at the same time, I'm waiting on artists. So I, I don't have that luxury of being like, schnell, schnell, he's kind of like having like, you know, like <laughs> I need I need to. So, so I'm in that like limbo. I'm like. I don't really have anything to promote right now, you know, other than yeah, it feels weird. And that, you know, that's where I'm at. I'm at a place where I'm not really doing art for the book. I'm mm -hmm. trying to finish up other things. So I really fear and feel like I'm in a weird spot and, but I feel like I need to, you know, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to get going on some new panels and pages, but we're not there yet because we got to see how things are tying up with the first one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I really don't want to move forward until we take care of, of what's a, right here in our face, you know, mm -hmm. um, and fulfillment is really probably the most important thing right now. So, oh, yeah. you know, once we fulfill, then it's going to be okay. Now let's Murph and I are going to have to have some meetings and figure out direction, like just to make sure we're on the same page. And I don't know yet. We'll see where we're going. Um, you know, how we want to attack the next but it's still steps. exciting, man. Still it exciting. is. I mean, I'm book super out there excited. It's a reality. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm, and I don't want to sound unexcited. I'm just talking about it because I'm like, shit. There's so much yeah. to do. Um, yeah, the reality not, sinks in. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh fuck, I got oh shit, yeah, and, then this, and I'm going, oh damn. But I really feel great about all of it, um, and I just hope people have a reaction to it and like it as soon as they get it. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Um, I think they will, but you never know. You just never know. And it's that unassured like limbo until you hear, you know what I mean? Well, so. I don't know, man. I, I got to see the sneak preview. I thought it was pretty good. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm jazzed about it. I'm awesome. definitely a cheerleader for it. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. See, there you go. That's what I need. And it's, um, I feel, I feel really good. I mean, <laughs> holy shit. My dogs are fighting <laughs> on my bed. I didn't realize. <laughs> and, um, so now they're barking at each other, but anyway, yeah, I, I thank you for that compliment, by the way. And you did a great job for us. And so hey man, um, happy to help. we are very thankful for that. But um, OK, well, guys, we'll keep you updated when we get things back. I'll probably post out there and let everybody see. The OK, somebody's going to die. Somebody's dying <laughs> on my bed. 
I got blood. <laughs> <to it, right? laughs> <laughs> it's like an Australian guy. <laughs> it's so freaking nuts. Well, I have a dog that's this big, and I have a dog that's like this big, and they're fighting. And not really. He's he's more like this big, and the other dog's like that big. And um, <laughs> when they fight, the big dog can get the whole head of the small dog in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but the little one is the one making that like, yeah, and just going nuts. <laughs> and then the big one's like, okay, I'm done. And, uh, it's sc- <laughs> not the size of the dog. Of yeah, it's the size that's of right. the fight in the dog. Or- that's exactly <laughs> right. So, well, thanks for coming on tonight. And hey, thanks uh, for having me, man. Yeah, it was a fun time. We'll have to do it again. Oh, and yeah. uh, so thanks, chat, for coming by, giving me a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go rethink my life now. And, uh, <laughs> Scary weapons designs. <laughs> <laughs> Too homoerotic. I got to get away from this man. I can't do it no more. Um, so, <laughs> so we will see you guys next week. Uh, we are going to have... Um, a guest on and I will be naming them throughout the week. We'll put out some advertisements oh, hopefully sweet. and get that ball rolling. So woohoo. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you. Nice.